everyone. Welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's video, I wanted to share a cool little activity that I just thought up in the last few minutes at the end of my busy day here. Um, it was something I was thinking about this morning. I tend to get most of my ideas in the shower. I don't know if that's the case for you guys. It's definitely the case for me where ideas always come in the shower it's pretty amazing or if I'm watching something inspirational or you know the, the wheels start turning and all that kind of thing and of course Ayurvedically I'm pretty sure it's also the afternoon which is a very good time high vata time good time for ideas but yeah I mean this afternoon I was thinking about um, the change of Mahadashas and how important that is and especially because I'm personally going through that and I've also noticed when I've consulted with clients and I've talked to them about the change in Mahadasha and did you feel that this block of time was like this and then did you feel that there was a year or two transition and how was that and you know how was the next block of time and so on and so forth it's fascinating to see how these grand cycles of time work it's really incredible and I thought of a neat little way to figure out or get clues I should say about what Mahadashi you might be in without even looking up your software. So without plugging in to a system or getting a computerized printout or indeed even going to the trouble of calculating the whole thing yourself, which would be very impressive, um, there are ways of figuring out how, what Mahadashi someone is in. This is one, one angle, one way in. Okay, so I thought you could look at a person's role models in life, right? I did this activity myself just now. I've got a piece of paper and I scribbled down the different role models I've had in the different Mahadashas that I've lived. Now, I haven't lived too many Mahadashas. I can tell you that, but I, there are three significant ones. And there's, well, the fourth one, so Mars. I was a little kid for most of that. And I think I was a bit of a Mars child actually because apparently my first solid food was chicken I don't really eat meat anymore <laughs> so that's kind of funny I was this meat-eating little child and I was a bit yeah like I was nice in primary school but I think in kindergarten and stuff like that apparently I was a bit full-on and um, I was kind of I wasn't I mean look there was just this one time where it was girls only in the sandbox and this boy came into the sandbox and I had to tell him off so he cried. Apparently it was a big deal. Anyway, after Mars Mahadasha, I think the aggression left me and I entered Rahu Mahadasha. Now, I jotted down on a piece of paper my role models during Rahu Mahadasha and during Jupiter Mahadasha. And now I'm about to start Saturn Mahadasha and I have a couple of role models here. It's really interesting. I've noticed a shift and I've noticed a change. And I can group these as well. So it's really interesting how... So I first wrote down Rahu, and then I wrote down the following names. Now, this is embarrassing, okay, but I think in the service of this activity and technique, I thought I'm going to share. So Rahu Mahadash and I was a teenager and, like, early 20s, and um, my role models, and I, I, I told you this is embarrassing, but I'm going to do this. Steve Jobs. Um, I, re I read his biography, I read all about him and this was, he had, I don't think he'd even gone back to Apple. He was, I think, it, I think the company was called Next and then he went to Pixar and I think this was even pre-Pixar but I was obsessed with Steve Jobs. I read everything about him, I read his biography, I read, um, oh there's another one, yeah, hang on a sec. So I've got another one for Jupiter. See, I knew that these lists were incomplete. They really are. But, I mean, this was what I did in five minutes. So who did I like during Rahu Mahadasha? I liked Steve Jobs, which then lead, led me to read John Scully's biography, which then led me to read Bill Gates's biography. And imagine this. I'm a teenage girl, and I, I, read, I keep reading all these tech kind of biographies. And my mum was really worried. She was like, who are you and what are you going to become? Like she was really worried. <laughs> I remember the Bill Gates biography. I bought that with my pocket money and I was 16. I used to hide it in my um, 
the cupboard and read it at night time after I'd finished all my schoolwork. I was such a geek. Uh, Lee Iacocca's biography, again, hugely embarrassing, but there you go. Um, pretty sure he ran Ford Motor Company or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I read Robert Cringley's Accidental Empires, and I read all about those guys, like Scott McNeely, Larry Ellison, um, I don't know, Steve Wozniak, the whole the works. I, I was into all of that stuff. I was obsessed. I was very tech obsessed. And I also read people like um, biographies of like old movie stars, for example. So I read loads of them. But, I, you know, Audrey Hepburn was a standout. And Jerry Seinfeld, I loved reading his biography. Um, I read whatever I could find. And when I... So when I wrote down all these names, I then stepped back and I thought, all right, how do I summarise this group? So when I'm looking at this group, I mean, what's going on here? And I'm kind of thinking Rahu, fame and power. So I think I kind of think that's what I was into at that time. I think I just wanted fame and power and obviously business success was important to me then. Uh, achievement. Audrey Hepburn's just lovely. So obviously loveliness has always been something I've admired, thank God. <laughs> I probably also loved that even as a meat-eating, warmongering child. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's have a look at Jupiter. I mean, Jupiter's list was re really interesting and really big, and I'm still jotting down, you know, names here. So Jupiter, we've got Louise Hay, huge role model. Uh, and all of her authors. So, you know, as a result of that, I got into Deborah King in a big way. I met Deborah King. I worked with Deborah King in California. She's a big influence in my life, definitely. Denise Lynn, I stayed in her house and did her soul coaching program. Um, Marianne Williamson, Caroline Mace. Caroline Mace, huge. I've read just about every single book she's written. I adore her. Um, Marianne Williamson, I said that. Eckhart Tolle, huge role model. My goodness, I have consumed so much, watched so much, read his two main pivotal books and reread them. Diana Cooper, uh, Krishnamurthy, Ram Das, Sonia Choquette, I really liked her at that time. Uh, when I was first getting into the whole spiritual thing, she was one of the first, the early Hay House, Hay House authors I came in contact with. Um, Anita Morjani, I also, I also spoke to her on the phone, that was kind of cool. Uh, Anita Morjani, oh my god, I read and reread and read and reread the end part of Dying to Be Me where she talks about all the spiritual lessons. That is absolutely phenomenal and I underlined like crazy. I loved that piece of work. It was beautiful. Dr. Eric Pearl I actually did his um, three-part reconnective thing in Prague, so I, I did that. Greg Braden, Joe Dispenza, Deepak Chopra. I mean, all the people on The Secret um Bob Proctor and gang you know and then there was um what the bleep do we know I got big into that and hence the Joe Dispenza connection um so then so I wrote down all these people Ram Dass did I tell you Ram Dass I should have told you Ram Dass uh and of course loads of channelers channelers god I should write them down too because I've reread and listened and all that's loads and loads and loads of things oh and also I must write down Heidi Sawyer see I I this list I mean I just brainstormed a few names, so, but they're all very, very similar. And you look at that, Jupiter Mahadasha, right? It's, it's, it's on the tin. It's, it's written, Jupiter Mahadasha. What else is going to happen? Okay, these are all healing, wisdom, spiritual teachers, philosophers, um, all that kind of thing. And these people were all my role models, and every day I was reading about them and aspiring to be like them. And I totally dumped all of this, you know, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, all that. I hadn't dumped it, but I mean, you know. Um, and I mean, look, mixed in with that, the Jupiter thing, there's also communication. I got big into um, my communication as well, reading lots of people who, who talked about writers and authors and um, obviously because, you know, the advertising thing. And that was when, you know, I had my big long ad career as well. So now let's take a look at Saturn Mahadasha. So we had Rahu, fame and power, that's how I've grouped that one. We've got Jupiter, healing and wisdom, that's how I'm grouping that. Now we've got Saturn and I'm just about to start my Saturn Mahadasha. So this is something I'm actually prepared to talk about as I've said. I'm not prepared to say that I'm one particular sign 
because I love all signs and I believe I am all signs and I don't discriminate between any sign. I think they're all equally amazing. And I've got 16 Braga charts. By the time you study all of those, you're every single sign. What aren't you? So, you know, but I'm definitely happy to talk about my, my Mahadasha setup. Now, I'm about to start Saturn Mahadasha and that's going to start from the end of December very soon. And I have got three role models listed. So you can see I'm not really, I don't have too many people listed here. Oh, actually, I'm going to add one more. I'm going to add Alex Honnold. I made a video about him recently. So he's come in. A lot of Saturnian people are coming into my life. And these three people are definitely highlights. So number one on the list, my all-time favorite, Karl Lagerfeld. I love Karl Lagerfeld. I think he's so amazing. He's 84. He works like probably six or seven days a week. He's just churning out design after design. I don't know how he does it. He's the creative director of three brands, he he's prolifically creative and this is a theme that you're going to see in these people Martha Stewart I'm a big Martha Stewart fan I've been into her probably these last few years same as Karl Lagerfeld but it's like you kind of you get ready for that next Mahadasha a couple of years in advance at least I think you know it's 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 kind of the tone is shifting and changing and starting and I can definitely see that happening for me. Um, I've got written here Carol Middleton, uh, who is Kate Middleton's mum, and I'm a fan of her because amazing businesswoman and as well prolifically creative in her sphere, in her life, in terms of what she does. Martha Stewart definitely is prolifically creative. I mean, what can't she make? I started watching her TV shows and I mean I grew up in Australia I now live in the United Kingdom nobody talks about Martha Stewart people don't really know her in either country yet somehow I've found her and I've watched everything I can find of hers on YouTube because I think she's amazing and I think she's prolifically creative and I think it's really admirable um, and Alex Honnold I've jotted down as well because I made a video about him recently and I was just really amazed at his work ethic and when I step back at the Saturn Mahadasha and looked at these role models that's the those are the words I wrote down work ethic so Rahu what have I got here Rahu fame and power Jupiter healing and wisdom Saturn work ethic and I can see I can see the shift over my lifetime and you know through all of these grand cycles of time I've been picking up all kinds of skills it was during my Rahu Mahadasha that I learned to code um, HTML web pages, you know, in the 90s. Um, and how to, I used to use fractal um, graphic design package and, and draw things and do things. And, you know, so I've always had that. And I think that, and, and, and the, the really interesting thing is that these skills, they never leave you. So once you pick up all of these things from these grand cycles of time, they are with you always and you can use them always. When I was a kid coding those web pages in HTML 2.0, little did I know, I thought if someone told me, what's the year now, 2019, someone told me 2020, you'll still be coding HTML web pages, I would have laughed. I would have been like, what? We'll all be in flying cars by then. Do you remember when like those films from when we were a kid and like, you know, the year 2020, we should all be like, in hovercraft and beaming ourselves into other countries and you know I think we always had a very advanced notion of what the future would be um, but it's really interesting that those old skills that I developed in Rahu Mahadasha I'm using them today so you know HTML hasn't changed that much so it's really interesting in terms of uh, Jupiter Mahadasha all the skills, everything I've picked up there has been absolutely vital and essential in what I'm now doing, which is my astrological journey. And, and really that's cracked open for me in a very big way in 2016, um, where I'm basically pretty much doing it full time and doing it professionally now. Um, one of the things I'm extremely grateful for, and I might do a video about this, this might be a separate video, but... Um, I'm extremely grateful for the fact that I have a, a, a very uh, broad and I would say broad and fairly solid grounding in spirituality and in healing and in all of those things before coming to astrology. 
that's really important. And if you're coming to astrology first without all that spiritual understanding, and I think I, this needs to be another video, I have thought that, but I'll just say in brief here to say that if you're coming to astrology without proper spiritual um, practice or background or knowledge or understanding, you've got to be careful with it, right? It's... it's um, it's a really interesting tool, astrology, and I'm going to make that another video. I'm not going to go into that now because it's, it's too many things. Uh, but yeah, all of these skills that I picked up from Jupiter Mahadasha, so all the skills from the Rahu Dasha, Rahu Mahadasha, all the tech type skills, um, and I picked up a lot of tech skills. I used to code uh, in Pascal, in C, in I mean, whatever. I, I was tech obsessed. I was mad about it. So, but I use all of those skills today still it, a little bit. Kind of, I use it kind of badly, but <laughs> and I'm still learning how to edit film and do things. But but I at least have some grounding there, and I at least have some some confidence to 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 uh, to make things. Um, yeah, Jupiter, a good grounding here, and I I think I personally needed that because. There's some bad news in my charts, you know, and I think that like I now know how to handle the bad news or the scary things and I see people doing this. I see people going, oh, no, my planet is debilitated. My life is over. And it's like, mm, no, that's not it at all. Uh, I've got all these debilitation, this, that. I've got all that. So that's another video. We're going to do that another time. But Saturn, what do we got going on here? It's going to be a big time of work ethic routine do 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 um get stuff done and you know be prolific in some way so uh well i, I doubt i'm ever gonna you know achieve the, the glorious heights of carl Lagerfeld or, or martha stewart i mean it, who cares it doesn't matter that's not what it's about you have a role model to motivate you to get you moving it doesn't matter whether you you know and I don't care. And that's, I think, one of the beautiful things about Saturn, actually, that I'm not into money in the way that I was in the Rahu Mahadasha, which is really interesting. Um, Rahu Mahadasha, I was, I was into money. Um, you can have a look at that by seeing, you know, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, John Scully, like all these kind of powerful tech people. Yeah, interesting. But I'm not, oh, God, no. I've read, um, oh, well, here we go. I mean, uh, yeah, communication and conspiracy theories, right? So I read uh, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Read that. If you want to know what a scam money is, read that book because um, I've got that book on my shelf. I've only read a quarter of it, embarrassingly. But I did watch, um, I think it's Griffith Edwards or Edward Griffiths. I always mix it up. But I've watched many of his two-hour lectures on YouTube. They are sensational. So, yeah, Saturn. And look at that. Saturn Mahadasha. You probably won't be that into money because it's like, you know it's a scam. And, uh, <laughs> and well, it's mm, you get real. You get real with life when it comes to Saturn. Saturn will get you to get real very quickly. Uh, you get grounded, you get real, you go beyond the illusions. And I think as well, you know, and this is something I, I do spend time on and love thinking about, what is the nature of time? And I think we might do some videos on that, but I can see we're running out of time. We're at the 19-minute mark and the camera is definitely going to fall over. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And what would be good for you to do is to take out a sheet of paper and get some kind of pencil it's actually a pen magic how cool is that I got this for one pound from the tiger shop because it's so cool and so you need a piece of paper and you need a pen and you need to think about your mahadashas and write down okay who are my role models and then see if there are any patterns that emerge see if you can group things see if you can see any trends see if you can see any overall themes it's a really fun exercise to do and you're sure, sure to learn some new things about yourself so I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, yeah, stay tuned on the channel because there's going to be more content and especially it's December, things are a little bit quieter and when they get a bit quieter, I'm able to make some more videos, which I'm really happy to do. So thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for interacting and subscribing and doing all that fun stuff and I look forward to seeing you next time.